Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, my dear friends. Allah bless you all. Okay, alhamdulillah, let us now conclude this beautiful surah, Surah Hud, uh, Al Fatiha. Bismillah. Iyakan abudu wa iyakan astain, ihdin as surat al mustaqim, surat al adina namta alayhim, ghari al maghdubi alayhim, malal talin. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen <coughs> Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad salatan tufrihuhu wa tusiduhu wa turdihi wajzihi biha anna ma huwa ahluhu ya arhamar rahimin Allahumma zidna wa la tanqusna wa akrimna wa la tuhinna wa a'tina wa la tahrimna wa athirna wa la tu'thir alayna wa ardina wa ardu anna ya kareem so, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, after this long stretch of this long surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a summary, an upshot of what's being said. A hausala, you could say the hausil, the fadlaka. And Allah Azza wa Jal, the whole surah has primarily been, you know, to, to comfort the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As I said, uh, this uh, Surah Yunus and the coming Surah Yusuf, they were all revealed in this very difficult time <coughs> after the passing of uh, Sayyidah Khadija radiallahu anha, the support of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and um, Sayyidina, well, and Abu Talib, uh, the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the opposition that the Prophet faced and the Sahaba faced from Quraysh was really intense at this point. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him these verses, these surahs, and the focus, as now we're now going to see in this surah, is that Allah is saying, look, you are a prophet of Allah. We're telling you about the previous prophets and what they've endured and what they faced of challenges, and my promise was true. The victory came, the support came, the help came, and those people who opposed them, who harmed them, they were the losers. So this is the general general gist of what's being said. So <coughs> he says, وَكُلَّنْ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الرُّسُلِ And we relate to your Prophet all of these stories, the stories of the messengers. Why? مَا نُقَصُّ عَلَيْكَ مَا نُثَبِّتُ بِهِ فُؤَادَكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الرُّسُلِ قُلَّنْ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ So the, the sequencing in Arabic, um, uh, has been moved around for various rhetorical purposes. But he's saying, um, we've, t you know, and all of these people who we've told you about, um, from the stories of the prophets, has, we've told you, uh, we've told you these stories uh, of all these people, the stories that, through which we support and strengthen your heart. So we relate to you, we relate to your prophet, the stories of the messengers to reassure your heart. وَجَاءَكَ فِي هَذِهِ الْحَقُّ وَجَاءَكَ فِي هَذِهِ الْحَقُّ وَمَوْعِظَةٌ وَذِكْرَ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ So this is what he's saying. And there has come to you in this surah and the other surahs uh, the truth, a warning to the disbelievers and a reminder to the believers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the end of this surah he's saying وَكُلَّنْ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ So قَصَصْ as we've said, we've seen Surah Yusuf as well, it means to follow someone's footsteps. So, uqsus uh, qasasa tell a story in, in detail. So, Allah's mentioned in you know, all the relevant points from all, all these stories of all these prophets, <coughs> the stories of these messengers, I mean, Anba'i Rusuli. Allah has told him, نَقُصُّ كُلًّا مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ Rusuli From all of these stories of these prophets, the stories which will help support the the heart of the prophet and strengthen the heart of the prophet allah has uh, saying that we have narrated these to you so the point of all of this has been tasbih to fuadi rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to strengthen and support the heart of the messenger what does tasbih mean um for something that is thabit, it's firm and secure. So tasbit is to stop something from moving about and shaking about, which is, you know, a, a metaphorical usage to, to give the meaning of, you know, uh, the iman uh, that the, for the believers. But it, the, the certainty, the yaqeen in the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the yaqeen, the absolute certainty, even yaqeen, yaqun al it has the meaning of when, you know, when you move water around in a puddle, or you know, in a puddle, in, in a pond, and it's all murky, and then when the dust settles, 
and the sediment settles and the water is all clear now. That's called yaqun al ma yaqeen. The process is called yaqeen now, it's clear. And so it's like a person clearly sees the truth of what Allah is saying and it's a strong, you know. So the prophets have uh, yaqeen, there's no doubt about this. But seeing it in action and seeing, especially when you're in the middle of a difficulty, you can believe something's going to happen. But when you're in the middle of a difficulty that seems like there's no end to it, um, it helps a person feel confident and secure and to look there's something to look forward to to know it is true it has happened before it will happen again so it helps so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did this to support the Prophet and uh, the Fu'ad is used to refer to the emotional heart the heart that can feel and yes a person in this situation is feeling sadness and feeling pain when, you know when facing all of these difficulties it's it's understandable so he's saying that um allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that he revealed this to strengthen and support the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam because knowing that allah's promise is true um is one thing but then seeing you know the incidences of um, and remember, this is not just for the prophet; it's also for the believers with him. That you know, seeing the incidences, incidences of where people were in a similar situation to them, people you know, the others of their tribe turned away from them, harmed them, rejected them. And what happened to them? What was their fate? It brings uh, it's a reminder that everyone benefits from. It brings certainty and knowledge. And it shows the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that his life is analogous to the lives of the previous Prophets. The experiences they had, he's having. The difficulties they faced, he's facing. And the end that they had where Allah helped them and supported them, that's what he's going to have. Right? So it brings a lot of, uh, <coughs> a lot of comfort to a person. And... Um, especially after you know being commanded to be patient, you, you can only be patient in a difficulty, and so this difficulty, this this trial, this struggle um, that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the Sahaba had, you know, he seeing these stories was a huge means of uh, support. So uh, um, Ibn Ashur has got a really great discussion here where he says that um giving the, the the reason why Allah gave the examples of the previous peoples what does it do it shows increases the person's knowledge of the fact that um human beings are of different levels in the in the way they think and what they can understand and clearly the, the people who see the guidance from their lord and see Allah has sent this guidance for our benefit in this life and for our ultimate benefit in the akhirah this is an intelligent person regardless of how well another person you know may do uh, compared to them on an IQ test or in a, on any level intelligence is the ability to you know to shun what harms you and to accept and embrace what is beneficial to you otherwise you won't call so it's not an intelligent act you know you have people who are intelligent but then you know um someone might have an addiction and they're doing something wrong that's harmful for them long term that's not an intelligent thing to do regardless of what iq the person has so these verses show people are different but the most intelligent people are those who accept the guidance that's come <coughs> from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> so based on that we know that differing with prophets is the old ancient you know habit of uh, people who want to turn away from guidance and you know they do this and there's always this struggle between the truth and falsehood the way of the prophets and the way of guidance and morality and good and then those people who uh, deceive others and lie and cheat and sometimes more often than not they make the truth look like it's false and the falsehood make it look like it's true <clears throat> <clears throat> so that's why like we have the statement of Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib لا يعرف الحق بالرجال ولكن اعرف الحق تعرف أهله Truth is not known by who's following it unless the person following it is a prophet right 
uh, whatever the Prophet is doing, that's going to be the truth. It's impossible for them to be supporting anything else. But with normal human beings, other human beings, just because someone's st stood by something, him being who he is doesn't mean that's right. So he says, no, know what is true, learn how to ad identify it, and you'll know who the people of the truth are because they'll be stood with that point. So <clears throat> this is what he's saying. And um, so this is the way of you know humanity and what they've chosen. So if this is the case, so messenger, don't be sad. Don't let these things sadden you. You know what to expect. And this helps a lot knowing what a person's behavior is going to be. If you know what to expect, then people aren't, you know, they're not saddened as much because it's not like they're expecting a different behavior and then they're getting, you know, a completely different behavior. So this is it. And <clears throat> and we also get, as Ibn Ashur says, from all of this, that the followers of the Prophet, the Sahaba, were tremendous people, the best of their generation. People who willingly looked at you know what Allah gave to the Prophet stopped about it stopped and reflected on it and they knew it was true so they followed it so that's what he says uh, and then he said and in this surah has come to you tremendous you know the absolute truth of the reality of things you know how prophets are what come what they face how and the ways in which people oppose them right al haqqu and وَمَوْعِظَةٌ The Master Mimi, a very strong way of saying wa'av. What's a wa'av? It's reminding someone of some certain harm. Reminding someone of certain harm in a way that will prevent the person from pursuing it. So you say something that shakes them up. Okay, whoa, well, I don't want to do that again. I don't want to go near that again. So it's a tremendous reminder. I mean, like we've seen in the, in the Fihada, uh, and other verses that we saw like this Really powerful, scary verses Just the Jalal of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very strong <coughs> And then he says um, <coughs> He says وَذِكْرَى And a tremendous powerful reminder A reminder that seeps to the very depths of their soul And shakes them up But who benefits? The mu'mineen, those who are firm in iman. Everyone, the reminder is there for everyone, but it's those who are firm believers who really benefit from it. So then he says, uh, why? Because the others don't want to believe. You know, they're, they're things that they, you know, they put first, the ulterior motives. وَقُلْ لِلَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ اِعْمَلُوا عَلَى مَكَانَتِكُمْ إِنَّا عَامِلُونَ And say to the Prophet, but then the wording later becomes plural. Uh, say to those who won't believe, not just who disbelieve, those who won't believe, la yu'minun, present tense, which indicates again and again and again whenever the opportunity and the command to believe comes, they don't. So they won't believe. So to say to those who won't believe, la yu'minun, i'malu ala makanatikum inna amilun. The same thing as what was said uh, by Sayyidina Shu'aib alayhi salatu wasalam. Persist in your ways, we will certainly persist in ours. But it's more than that, isn't it? As we said uh, said then, that he's saying to them, okay, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. As much as you can, to the great best of your ability. We also will do the same, but also he um, means, you know, do what you want against us. Do your worst. Lay down your plans. Get your schemes, you know, in order. Get your allies together and plan to harm us. Do whatever you want. We are working. We're going to persist in you know, teaching this message, spreading this message, and we'll see who the end goes to. We'll see who ends up on top. And this is clearly, it's always going to be people who um, have Allah Azza wa Jal on their side. Or we could say the people who are on the side of Allah Azza wa Jal. And that's clearly what happened uh, in the lifetime of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and in the lifetimes of the previous prophets alayhi salatu wasalam and it's what, ha what happens uh, you know it, it's, it's going to keep happening until the day of judgment and so in the amilun we are also working and you know nothing's going to stop them from you know from stopping stop the messenger from telling people about uh, allah and um <clears throat> you know and the truth which you know also testifies you know that the believers who are with him that they they really have true faith and they're willing to put up with all um you know all of these things you, you know just to please allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so then he says <clears throat> uh inna and wait like 
wait as in not just hang on but wait for it wait for it we are waiting for it you know for the fossil the right for the criterion the distinction where allah sends down says okay this is this shows these people were right and these people were wrong they were saying uh was it in tastaftihu faqad ja'akum al fath you know um in uh, like we saw <coughs> in uh, surah al anfal they were asking for victory he said uh, not victory they were asking for uh, a distinction you know oh allah shows who's on the truth who's who's true and who's wrong and and then he said if you're asking for that here it is you know the battle of badr <laughs> Right, the army, you know, three, to, you know, a third of your size, you know, defeated you soundly, and you fled. So, you know, there it was. So it wasn't too long after this, was it? No, it happened. So then he concludes the surah uh, by saying, "Wallahi ghaybu samawati wal ard," and to Allah belongs alone the knowledge of what is hidden in the heavens and the earth, absolute, you know, uh, knowledge of everything. Wallahi hasr Allah alone he can teach whatever of it <coughs> he can teach whatever of it he wants to his creation of you know his prophets or others but ultimately uh no one's knowledge is equal to Allah's knowledge right subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ilayhi yurja'u al-amru or in another qira'a yarji'u al-amru kulluhu and to him all matters are returned or to him all matters do return you could say fa'buduhu so worship him and put your trust in him wa tawakkal alayhi wa ma rabbuka bighafilin amma ta'malun and another qira'a qira'a amma ya'malun <coughs> and your lord is never unaware of what you do or, or, or in another wording of what they do so what is saying that all the things the knowledge of everything that's happening all the matters of the believers uh, the disbelievers allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone knows everything so there's a promise in this uh for the believers because he's saying to the believers tell them wait tell them do your worst so allah knows what's going to happen and so he's there's a there's a hint of a promise in this to the believers you know good news for you and uh, a threat to the disbelievers right in this so he says he knows all of these matters of the unseen wallahi wallahi ghaybu samawati wal ard all of the heavens and all and, and all of the earth so he's really generalized it to really show that he has ultimate knowledge which you know indicates that he alone is the true god and ilayhi yarji'u al amru or ilayhi yurja'u al amru the two qiraat the matter is returned or the matter does return to him to which it shows that you know these people when they're turning away from god and trying to worship these idols that the idols that they've made up or their forefathers have made up the, the, what do they have nothing these idols can't control anything they can't influence anything they can't affect anything it's nothing right but all matters return to allah allah is in absolute control of everything he can, if he wills it everything could cease to exist everything is created and if he wills it which he will that you know everyone who, who's ever lived will be resurrected and uh, the day of judgment will occur and the matter is going to be resolved it's it's all up to him and it's all under his control subhanahu wa ta'ala so you know the planning and victory and loss you know humiliation and honor all of these matters are in the hands of allah azza wa jal and you know those they can't do anything they can't do anything to oppose him right and then he says Uh, so if that's the case fa'buduhu so worship him devote yourself to him give your entirety over to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he's deserving of worship not any other being right so clearly this is you know he's saying it to the prophet but it's um there's a message in there for the others you know there's a message in there for others and so if allah is the one who's in charge and the one who's in control then it's basically saying everyone else is incapable of changing and influencing things right if allah allows things to happen then yes if allah makes things happen a particular way yes but others cannot do anything especially idols and their false gods who don't even exist and you know so you know if he is like this then worship him right because he is the one and true only god and he also is also saying that their worship is false and that you know the idols don't deserve worship 
He says, Wa ma rabbuk, uh, and your loving Lord, O Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, is, in not, is not heedless at all in any way, shape or form of, uh, of what you're doing here in this qira'ah. Um, so all of the difficulty that you're enduring, all of the stresses, all of your efforts, it's all known, it's all seen. Allah is fully aware of it all. So there's an, an implied promise for him and for the believers. And in the other qira'ah, amma ya'malun, of what they are doing, then that's also, there's a threat in there because Allah knows every bit of it and they're, they're going to be recompensed and requited for every one of their actions. And we ask Allah's protection and safety uh, from ever doing things that displease him or being in a state that is you know displeasing to him let alone anything that makes him angry a'udhu billah so um, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Allah has blessed us once again with another beautiful surah being completed and we shall next continue with uh, surah Yusuf insha'Allah ta'ala uh, ahsan al-qasas the best of stories and we look at that insha'Allah Okay, Allah bless you all. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.